In other developments in Ukraine, the country is steadily paving its way towards NATO membership. A parliament in Kiev has voted to drop the law, which uh, forbids the country from joining any military blocs. That law has been in force since 2010. Soon after being elected, President Petro Poroshenko said that the country would join NATO in the future. Russia has already said such membership uh, could turn Ukraine into a potential enemy. Well, let's talk more about this with British uh, journalist and broadcaster Neil Clark. He's been reporting on Ukraine for a while. He's joining us live now. Hi there, Neil. Um, Ukraine's Hi, clearly very keen to do this and to join NATO. Um, how soon could it happen? Well, I think, Kevin, that uh, the NATO alliance itself, the member states, will be very divided on this because it's quite clear that this ratchets it up, really, the, the, the dangers. Because if if Ukraine was to join NATO, then there would be an incredibly uh, dangerous situation, wouldn't we? Because then we'd have the Hawks, the Hawks in the US, uh, for example, claiming how many times have we heard this year, Kevin, of, of a Russian invasion of Ukraine, all these phantom invasions. That could be the trigger for all-out war. So it's a very dangerous. Uh, I mean, step. I'm You know, we started this by saying, how soon could it happen? I mean, it, let's let's wind it back. Is it likely to happen? Would they allow it to happen? Well, I mean, there is the. Uh, uh, if you look at the NATO uh, expansion sort of uh, documents, they say that uh, it's preferable if states actually who have territorial disputes with neighbours that these are resolved through the OSCE process. It doesn't actually prohibit countries that have territorial disputes from joining, uh, but the inference is that uh, states uh, uh, wouldn't be allowed in if they have outstanding territorial uh, disputes, which of course Ukraine does have with Russia and has disputes with Donbass and Crimea. Uh, uh, but NATO has broken its own rules in the past. We've seen that many times. We saw NATO break its own rules when it bombed Yugoslavia in 1999. Yugoslavia was not actually a member state. So uh, NATO went way beyond its charter in doing that. So NATO could bend its rules again and, and, and get Ukraine in. I think there'll be certain countries in the NATO alliance who will want Ukraine in, if you like the more hawkish countries, uh, and other countries will be pretty terrified at the prospect, let's face it, because this, as I said, would be a very dangerous step and it would make uh, an all-out war much closer, really. Yeah, some caution um, on the NATO side has been uh, voiced before. Let's just take a listen to some of the uh, latest thoughts about it from uh, a number of people. NATO membership for Ukraine is not on the agenda now. I do not see Ukraine on the way to joining NATO. When the new government says that its goal is Ukraine accession to NATO, this evidently creates great problems. If you choose a NATO path, it's a very hard work. There is a lot to do to convince the NATO allies that you can meet the criterion and fulfill their responsibilities. So, uh, not altogether welcome to the party there. And also thoughts from the Russian side of this happened. Uh, PM Dmitry Medvedev uh, for Russia says Ukraine joining NATO, quote, would turn the country into its enemy. And what would the repercussions be? Well, I, I, think, I think, you know, the Christmas season now, it's supposed to be the time of peace on earth and goodwill to all men. This is a very provocative step from Poroshenko. Uh, just a few days before Christmas, and I think that it's only going to increase tensions between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's a very unwise step. It's certainly not in Ukraine's best interest. And is it really democratic? Because you've got, while you've got 60 to 70 percent of people in the West, according to polls, in favour of Ukraine joining NATO, you've you've got uh, much less than that, sort of 40 percent less than that, around 20 percent or so, wanting it in the East. And so the country is very, very divided. And this is about the last thing that Poroshenko should be doing. He wants to bring his people together. But well, being, yeah. Well, that's, that's, exactly, that, that's exactly what Russia's uh, foreign minister has been talking about, Sergei Lavrov. He said that the crisis in the East would not be helped if Ukraine joins NATO right now. It's a divided country. How could a divided country uh, go into it fully altogether? I mean, how do we know that's what the whole country wants to go into NATO? But it doesn't, does it? And I think that's why neutrality is the most sensible policy. When you've got an extremely divided country with, with radically different opinions on this in one half of the country to the other half, then the sensible step is, of course, a policy of neutrality. So who's and, pushing, uh, it? So well, who's pushing I think, it? You say that's the well, sensible step, so yeah. why not take the sensible step and do the sensible thing? Well, we've got to be a bit cynical here, I'm afraid, and the fact is the United States put an awful lot of money. We know the amounts they put in, the billions of dollars they put in uh, to try to bring about a change of government in Ukraine, which, which they succeeded in earlier this year, and did they really pull that money in, Kevin, just to have a government following the same policy of neutrality? No, I think the United States very clearly wanted regime change in Ukraine because precisely they wanted to get Ukraine in NATO as they wanted to get other countries uh, boarding Russia into NATO. That's been their strategy uh, over the past uh, uh, 15, 20 years or so. So I think that uh, Poroshenko, I think, you know, it's very likely he's coming under pressure from the US to actually embark on this path uh, because, as I said, an awful lot of money and time was invested in this project 
of bringing about a new government in Ukraine by the US and, uh, and the EU, of course. And I think the aim of the game was to lock the country into what we call Euro-Atlantic structures, which on the one hand is getting the Ukraine on the path towards EU membership, on the other hand, locking it into NATO. Journalist and Broadcasting O'Clock, thanks for your thoughts today. Appreciate it.